is a little technique of mine I like to do. I like to put the double spoon in it. Because it's a single boiler, not. Maybe adjust it a little bit. And there we are. That's cappuccino. Well, hello, everyone. I'm back. And in the, and just as I said, and here we are with the infamous espresso machine from last from last um, month's video about the rock about the Rocky here. All right, so I'm gonna so we're gonna talk a little bit about this machine today. So let's just start. I'm gonna say it, even though I should say this at the end, I should, I'm gonna say it's probably the best beginner espresso machine you can buy for the for the money. I'll get into that why, but there's not, but as everything is, nothing is ever perfect. I'll get I'll get into that later though. So we're gonna start. I bought this machine a little over a year ago. The sand says I've been since I've had it for a year and maybe. Quite a few drinks on it. I'd say I'd say I'd say I've got a pretty good forty of what to do and what to say about. It. So let's get started about. It. As you can see, it's a very simple machine. It reminds me a lot of a Ranchelio Silvia, how it's just a very manual machine. There's no auto fit there's no auto fill in the boilers, there's no PID temperature control. It's a very simple machine. You see? You got two you got two switches and a valve. You see? That's your on switch. Press it, you see, the red light goes on. The green light is basically the power the pa to show you if the heating element goes on or not. If it's on, if the light is green, it means the heating element's not on. If the light is, if the light's not on, it means the heating element is he is heating. And you got two modes here. The switch from the from the switch to voltage from each from one thermostat to another. You got brew mode, which basically has one thermostat for brewing. Switch it here, the light goes out as I said. And you go steam, and you go steaming mode. So we're, gonna, we're not going to keep it on that. So now I'm going to see what the what the Rocky has came with. I should have got it. It comes with a couple of things. It comes with the machine itself. And it comes with two port. It comes with two porta filters, a bottomless porta filter, and a double spout porta filter. And there's a problem with these porta filters, but I'm going to mention that in a second. It also comes with a lovely scoop and a tamp, as every as every machine will will always have from now until the end of time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about some of the what my pros. These are fully stainless steel porta filters. You get two of them, and you get a bottomless one, which is a really big up upgrade. No bit no espresso machine at this point will ever have one of those, as far as I know. And then you get a stock basket. You get a single shot basket. Now, in a double shot basket. Now, the double shot basket is comes with a pressurized basket. I bought one of these on Amazon for ten dollars. It's non pressurized basket because I hated the I hate pressurized baskets in general. Of course, we're not going to use that. Now, there's a big problem. There's a big problem here. There's no ambiguity between the two porta filters. You see, you cannot fit. You double your double basket into the single spout port into the single porta filter, and you cannot and you can fit the single one into the double port in the double porta filter. But there's these little grooves in here. The little one had little nubbins that would come out, and you put it in, you would turn it to lock it in. This one comes with a spring, like every other espresso machine. Yeah, the spring's still in there. Yeah, the spring's still in there. That spring's still in there, and it, and it holds it, and that's what holds it, the the basket. So I would just like it. They could just make this a little bit bigger, and a little bit taller, so you can fit two ba both baskets in. And in all the although in the thermal machines, you ha you come with two non pre you got a double and a single non pressurized and double and single pressurized. So you could use both at the same. So you could both use either or. But 
You did, they do come with very nice hand. They do come with very nice handles. Anyways. Another thing I do really like about this machine is that this valve right here is a true valve. If you were to open it a little bit, some water you see water would start dripping because it's an actual valve. You get like pre infusion of sorts. Then if you turn a little bit more, water starts pumping. There's a little switch in there. As soon as you turn it, you'll hit the switch and it'll start. You don't see that on a, lot of, on a lot of really modern espresso machines these days. If you turn it to the right, water starts coming out of the steam wand. Except you cannot get hot water out of this machine. It will, there's no switch in here on brew mode that the pump will cook with the mu there's no other, There's not another switch in here. They'll turn on the pump and it'll let the boiler fill up and go up through, get let you get hot water from the steam wand. Even though, because it's a thermal block boiler, you wouldn't really, you wouldn't really do, you have very much success of getting a large amount of hot water out of it anyways. So I guess it's still, I guess it's still, I guess it's still the option there because pressure does build up in here kind of. Now, let me see you right here. So I want to talk, so I want to talk about, so I'm going to go around this machine. So you can see over here, you got the side here and back here's the water tank. They bit, they put some nice style into the water tank by slanting it, like slanting it sideways to make it look here. I can show you on the other side. Make it look like a bit of, like my own art. It's got a full stainless steel body all around, which is not something you'd see in the, in the thing of this, pre, in the espresso machine of this price range. Oh, maybe, I'm gonna try to pop back up. There we go. And on the top of the machine, see I have my the cups, a steam pitcher, and then I usually would have my uh, shot, my little uh, espresso shot catcher there. Uh, I forgot what they're called. Shot glasses down there. And over here, the machine does not come with a tamp, but I did buy one. It was really cheap. It works really well. I also bought one of these, which also I thought I'd like to mention here. You cannot fit. Uh, you cannot fit the tamp of this one into into this one. You can, but it'll get stuck on this little this little two number here. I don't know why that's there, but it is. Anyways, I'd say it's definitely a very good looking machine. There is just there is one fu a couple of fun a couple of functionality issues with this machine that really kind of bug me. So as you can see, the drip tray is on here. It adds, definitely adds some nice style to the machine. But when you put, when water goes down to there, the water will go all the way over to here. Now that's not a very good example, but it water will come over here and sometimes pour off to the side. What they could have done is like, is like this little magnet here. I wish they could have done like in the Instapot Vortex. They could have done like a design like that on there and that would like, com that would have completely solved the issue. Some espresso machine manufacturers do include, do include that as a drip tray design. But there's also one other functionality issue that is really big, if you, which is really noticeable if you're making espresso, which is what it's intended for. Now, when I go to descale this machine, I take the screen out so I can clean out underneath the screen. And I notice that the, in the middle, there's a screw here. But on the side, on one side, there's a hole where the water will come out. And it doesn't, and it's supposed to disperse around the screen, but it will, most of the water will actually push down through, through that one side of the screen. And you can cut, see sometimes, especially that it doesn't happen when I'm using the bottomless one and the double spout. This happened when I was using the pressurized one too. You can see there's a cha big channel in there. So if they just kind of like made it a bit of like three other holes they would go evenly around for water to come out evenly. This would have completely solved the issue. Now there, now there isn't that. There is like one other function. I will say there's another functionality issue. Well, not really functionality. This is more more of my personal opinion. Is the cost of this machine? There now. The, both there's two versions of this machine. They both made. They're both made in China. And this version is by, by Capresso. And it has a couple of changes, but the but the other one that's made by like Icock I, and a couple of other and like Leaving Steel and a couple other brands have them. I have an ice cream machine by Icock, by the way. So that's how I know that's how I know them. But they have but they sell it for like half the co almost half the cost of this one. There's not very much differences at all. Now yes, this now the differences are there. This 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 little 
like graded, like little graded part right here. And then the two switches are different and it doesn't come with the two steel pour filters, but that wouldn't, that doesn't exactly justify the 200 and a bit, the $120 difference between the two, the, between the two models. That's a big, that's, that person to me is a big issue. They all, there's a net, there's also the cafe, the cafe pro model that's literally made that's a that's comes from there's literally the same the same one sold by those two companies as well so really i did so i just feel like they should have lowered the price because this is that's really that's really kind of ridiculous but anyways that may put that may sound like i may be sound a bit harsh on this machine and that it sound that may that some of the the design flaws may make this higher price sound like a stand out like this machine stand out like a sore front sore fun but that, but me, to me, that's what makes a critic a critic, and that's what I'm trying to be. That's trying to I'm trying to be about this machine. You gotta find the things that make it bad, but also the things that make it good. So, I say a big pro here is that it com obviously comes with the steel pour filters, but also since it's a thermal block, it heats up very quickly. So if you if you're like some people, any some people I know do this, they brew the shot first and then they steam the milk, and they just I'll just play this in real time here. And you can see when the green light comes on. It should come on any sec it should come on any second now. It heats up very fast. But something I do uh, there's a little steam technique here because this machine is similar to a Gosher classic where it only holds up only holds a, a little bit of holds a, a like what a uh, only so much steam in the boil in the small boiler that if you're steaming like a regular pitcher of milk at the end you see a little bit of steam comes out so the big so the gust of steam that comes out is a single hole tip as well and i forgot to mention their big plus there's a I hope you see the light came on there is conventional conventional steam one it looks like i gotta clean that but you get you can actually try to you can actually make milk with lots with latte art I've had some success with that, as you'll see in the clip after this. And my my uh, technique here is that once the light turns on, you turn the steam on and off. And luckily, this machine builds up steam pre pressure, unlikely the Breville Infuser and Breville Barista, Barista Express, where you turn it and you have to wait for the steam to come up on demand. I, I would have. Ne I never really liked that. So this one, that's definitely a big plus for me. If that sometimes the light will cut will go out, meaning that there's more steam building up, and then, and then, it's got pretty. As you can see, the light went on, meaning, and you can see the steam pressure definitely did go down, which means that it has more work to do. But you are playing with a limited amount of steam because there's no autofill function in the boiler to keep filling the boiler, and so you can have more steam. This machine's actually got pretty good steam pressure for for what you're for what you're gonna do, but it's very comparable to the Breville Barista Express, where it, you will have to. I will make a video on how to steam milk with this machine using my technique, so you can get the best milk quality possible. Because on the machine, on most videos, you'll see machines with tons of steam pressure. I have used machines with tons of steam pressure before. I've gotten great milk with them, but you need to. But for this machine, and what for most people will end up can afford, you will need. I'll teach you how to use this. See how to get great milk. Now, I'm gonna now. What was I gonna talk? About? All right, so another big point about this machine is that, it's, as I said before, it's very simple. Therefore, it was very, there's very few things to go wrong. But I, I did not, unlike my little, unlike my grinder over here, I can they, I did not buy this from Holate Love. I did buy it from, I did buy it from Amazon back then because I didn't really know what Holate Love was. So, but and and overall, I. And now we will cut to, and now because I ran out of things on my little, on my little script, on my little script over here, hey, I'm going to go to a, sh a video, uh, the shot of me making a cappuccino with this machine. It's a very enjoyable experience.